Well, many say that this, um, you know, news of the Alphabet uh, Workers Union is sort of an historic moment. I'm curious to hear your view on uh, this, this recent development, given that especially the tech workers and the tech industry has been sort of um, yeah, argued against uh, labor groups in the past that they said, well, they focus usually on, on you know, wage equality and issues like that, not necessarily on larger ethical concerns and sort of the, the role of tech in the industry. So these 200 and something workers now came together uh, for yes, inclusive and fair uh, working conditions, but also, I guess, on a deeper level uh, to drive the company towards um, a more becoming a more equitable and um, ethical workplace. So what was your first reaction and can you help us draw a bit of a larger context uh, on this latest development? Sure, I, I feel like there are two parts to the answer here. One is just the, the context of what's been happening inside Google and the tech industry. And the other one is like the history of the labor movement um, and, and whether unions have um, much experience helping workers like the, the Googlers and the Alphabet employees advocate for things that are outside of traditional labor issues like wages and working conditions. Um, on that first piece, you know, I think that this has been building for years inside Google. Um, in 2018, um, Google employees came together in June to offer a shareholder proposal on diversity and inclusion metrics. That was um, kind of a historic moment in the company and the first time that employees had joined together to do that. Um, that was also happening in the context of, you know, internal rumblings that employees had around business dealings, uh, contracts with the Department of Defense. Um, you know, employees were raising concerns about not knowing what they were working on um, and feeling like it was it was a, a dignity uh, issue that it was their right to know what they were building. Um, and then of course, in November of that year, um, the historic global walkout happened at Google, um, which wasn't just historic in the company, but was pretty historic for the labor movement. Um, and while these workers were not members of a union, um, I and many people, you know, consider that part of the labor movement. You're taking collective action with your colleagues um, to make demands of your employer. And that's a labor action. So um, that was a big moment organized by workers, some of whom didn't even know each other, using uh, Google's own tools, Google spreadsheets and docs to make that happen. Um, I had, a, a, you know, I think many folks suspected that was not the end of action at Google. That was an important milestone, a marker, but um, that you know actions would continue to build and other leaders would step up inside the workforce um, to take action. So it didn't come as a great surprise to learn that um, hundreds of employees had come together, signed union cards, agreed to give 1% of their annual salary to a union um, to join together as a minority union. Um, the other question you asked about the labor movement, um, you know, I think unions actually have a ton of experience advocating for things that fall outside of, of wages and benefits and, you know, safety protocols. They, you know, teachers unions often advocate for newer textbooks for their students. Hospital worker uh, union members have, have advocated for patient safety issues and protocols that aren't specifically related to their, um, you know, to like the most pressing worker concerns, but workers want to feel good about the work they're doing, right? And and um, and so while it's not a bread and butter union issue, I think there there is a lot of experience that labor has um, in pushing employers to, you know, speak to and answer employee questions and demands, um, and 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 sort of deal with issues of employers' impact on the broader community because workers are members of those communities, right? Um, so that's that's not too unusual. Unions also have experience like advocating for broader political issues, um, issues like you know fair immigration policies, racial justice issues. So um, you know I think you're going to see some of that too from you know the the, the Google or the Google employees who've signed up to the Alphabet Workers Union. Why do you think they, they did that now? Like, is there to some extent, you know, this past year, 2020 of, of a year reckoning um, and the ongoing antitrust hearings, um, 
what do you think like these these issues sort of play play a part a role in this rise of worker activism well i don't have a window into i i, I think the work was happening behind the scenes for for a couple of years building mm -hmm. to this moment um i don't have a window into why the decision was made to go public this week um I think that was probably a strategic decision made by the workers themselves. The, I know they elected leadership in December. So I, I imagine leadership sort of helped make, you know, make this decision um, that it was time to go public. Sometimes people go public with their union efforts as a, as a form of protection. And so there, there could have been fear of retaliation. And there is some documented evidence. I mean, the NLRB um, found that Google likely violated um, workers' rights by retaliating against workers who were organizing um, with the union by firing them. So, you know, that's that's a way that workers protect themselves is, is making a you know a public uh, mm -hmm. announcement that they're they are in fact unionizing. That might be one reason. I don't think it had a ton to do with the antitrust effort, but um, again, I don't have a window into like what the strategic decision was there. But I just know that this this had been going on behind the scenes for years, so it's not it, it's not directly related to what's been going on in Washington. Um, mm -hmm. I do think there's like you know there's a growing public critique of the work that's happening in these companies, the, the products, the, the the influence on our democracy and on our lives, and that affects employees too. Employees are part of that conversation, um, and so getting back to this question of like. People want to feel good about the work they do, and they're hearing what's what you know the, the concerns being raised by elected leaders, by their neighbors and friends, and you know I can see why joining a union would be incredibly appealing as a way to kind of reconcile that like you know I want to stay at this company, I want to continue to do this work, but I also want to feel good about you know trying to make some change, um, and this is one way that I can do both, right? Mm, and I think sort of this solidarity is right at the, the the at the heart of it right to to form form a union because of solidarity and to support each other and i want to cite uh, daniel gross from brand workers who tweeted something along along those lines as well and he said so this that this turn to workplace organizing really needs to endure uh, so to the get to actually the next level and then win so on the notion of endurance um that's something that many of us uh, due to the effects of the covid 19 pandemic uh, lockdown that are ongoing are forced to lean into. And as someone like yourself who's been working in this space for such a long time already, um, how, how do you endure you know, this often slow or maybe even sometimes stagnant progression of change making in the workplace? Well, you know, I, it may see, change in the workplace may be occurring slowly. But change in the hearts and minds of workers here in the United States and elsewhere, um, I, uh, I've been struck by how quickly things are changing here. There is a, there is a growing critique of capitalism um, happening all over the world. Um, there is a, a greater willingness of worker, workers in workers themselves to um, make demands of employers and um, to, to take uncomfortable risk um, because uh, they feel it is their right. And that, that, that has, to me has happened at breathtaking speed. Like I'm watching in my lifetime, unions right now are more popular than they've ever been in my lifetime. And this idea that workers can take collective action um, is becoming a popular idea. So I think culture is often a leading indicator of where we're headed. And while maybe policy hasn't caught up yet, and business and the you know sort of economic policy hasn't caught up yet. Um, I think it's going to be it's it, that we will start to see change um, at that level in the next decade. And you know I also think in, in personally endurance like I I draw from the, the the centuries long history of the labor movement. So you know I'm I'm a blip. My work is a blip on the screen um, and. I think I, I take some inspiration from from labor history and just sort of understanding like where I sit in the grand scheme of things, where where all the efforts that we're engaged in right now sit, and I place it sort of in the same period of time that happened as industrialization was taking place in the late 20th century. Um, we're kind of in that moment, um, 
again. And, you know, it might seem like 20 years, 30 years is a long time, but it, when you're thinking about um, what we're building towards and how we're creating kind of a new economic future, that's not a great deal of time. We can do this. <laughs> um, so that's, you know, I don't know if that answers the question of endurance, but uh, history is, I think, a, an important thing to reflect on. That's great. Um, and on the, I have to ask one one last question on history and the future. Um, given the latest uh, events in the U.S. with with this just yeah absurd, horrific uh, mob attack uh, on the Capitol this, yesterday and this sort of unparalleled assault on democracy uh, as a whole, and at the same time, thank God, uh, Joe Biden's official victory uh, now after the completed uh, electoral count. What is your personal current sentiment and do you think that this moment though it is seems very dark um is one of or can be one of catharsis too to lead towards this real change you know oh so i'm still processing what happened yesterday it's a great question i do think that in these that these can be moments where people like the aperture changes for folks. And um, I do hope that the events yesterday, um, you know, will make clear um, how this, how the rhetoric and the leadership in, in this country um, is, is driving this, you know, our nation into a place that I hope m most people don't wanna go. Um, but I'm, you know, I'm like waiting to see what happens in the next week, what happens in the next month. Um, I generally, you know, politics is not going to save us. I've never thought that. Um, <laughs> so I do think like that there is, there is incredible, part of the magic of the labor movement is that these are like in our workplaces, they are civic spaces. They are places where we often gather with folks who have different ide political ideas than us. Um, they come from maybe different backgrounds and experiences. And we have to learn to work together with these folks. Um, and so, you know, I think it's, it will be incredibly important in the coming years that we focus on civic spaces, places where we mix with neighbors and folks who don't think like us. Um, and I hope that there is more like, there is more support from policymakers to support workers in workplace democracy efforts. Um, I think, you know, labor law reform should be a top priority of the incoming Biden administration, because I think that's one place where um, we can turn the temperature down and, you know, sort of work together. Thank you so much, Jess. Thank you.